Okay, so we are working on the explicit equation practice. How do you write the equations? A lot of you had questions on this, so we're going to do this together right now. A few examples before you try it on your own. Okay, so um, I made a little jam board for this. So here's one and two from the worksheet. So if you have your worksheet printed out, go ahead and you could write on it. Or um, these are actually your notes, so you should put this in your notebook and um, I guess it should go in your notebook and the worksheet, but let me get my writing tool here. Okay, so find the common difference, D. Um, so we might wanna find what the common difference is, what D is. The zero term explicit equation, so what's the equation, our T of N equation. The term named in the problem, we want to find the 30th term for the first problem and state if the given value is in the sequence using the explicit equation. So is negative 40 in the, in the sequence? If we keep going, will negative 40 be part of this? Or is it negative 41? You know, is it negative 42? What number is part of the sequence? That's what we're gonna figure out. Okay, so the common difference. So if we look at 10, four, negative two, negative eight, what is happening to these numbers, guys? Are they going up? Are they going down? By how much? <laughs> by how much? By six. They're going what by six? Down. Down by six. Okay, let's see. <laughs> yes, they are going down by six. That's right. Okay, going down by six. So um, our D is going to be negative six. We want to write that on our paper, guys. D is negative six. Hopefully I can change my pen. Okay, D is negative six. So our equation is gonna be negative six N, you know, plus or minus something. We're gonna, we have to find what goes here, what the zero term is, All right? So if the first term is 10, we need to find the term that came before 10. And yes. since, good, since we're minusing six both going forward, we're minusing six. So we want to add six to go backwards one. So you want to take 10 plus six, which would give you 16. Okay, guys, that is how you find the second half of your equation right here. So it's um, 16. So we're going to put plus 16. That's the zero term. That would be where your y intercept, your y intercept would be at 16. It would start right there. And then this would go down six every time, down six, down six, down six down six, right? So this graph would be a line going down, but we don't connect the dots because they're jumping from one number to the next. So that is our equation, our T of N equation. Okay, you're gonna see, sometimes we use this equation in algebra two, we use A of 30. So A sub N is another notation that a lot of older books use. And this is actually a good notation. T of N is, I have only ever seen in our textbook, the CPM textbook, and I've never seen it anywhere else. The rest of the world is going to, if you read other textbooks, they're going to have this notation. A of N <coughs> equals negative 6N plus 16. Okay. <coughs> and we want to find the 30th term. A sub 30 means find the 30th term. So we're going to put A sub 30. So you see the 30 is taking the place of the n. So this means the 30th term. Okay, and hopefully you're writing this down. So we're going to plug in 30 here, negative 6 times 30 plus 16. Okay, and we're going to work this out. Negative 6 times 30 is going to be negative 180 plus 16. Well, One's a negative, one's a positive, so we're going to subtract these, and we are going to get negative 164. Negative 164. Okay, so our A sub 30, or our 30th term, is going to be negative 164. So if we kept going and going and going in this sequence, eventually we'd get to negative 164, right? We, the uh, 30th one would be negative 164. That makes sense because they're, these are negative numbers and they're getting lower and lower and lower. Okay, so we've almost answered all the questions. We have one more question and that last question is, is negative 40 part of the sequence? Is this 
part of the sequence or not. Okay. To figure that out, we need to plug in um, negative 40, but where do we plug in negative 40 for this equation? We're going to plug it in on the left hand side of the equation, not for n, right? We are not plugging it in here, no. We are plugging it in to the left hand side of the equation, right? Not here, over here, because this is where the the term goes, the um, the value of the, any number should end up over here. Any of these numbers should end up on the left hand side. This is where you plug in the term number and figure out what term this is. So n, right, is the term number. So we want to find what term number negative 40 is. So we're going to solve for n here. We're going to work backwards. We're going to subtract 16 from both sides. We're going to get negative 40 minus 16 is negative 56 equals negative 6n. And then we need to divide by negative 6. And our question is, is negative 6 going to go evenly into 56? Okay, this is where you get your calculators out, right? I get my calculator out. I divide 56 by 6. And you should get, what do you guys get? Should get 9.3, that 9.3333333, right? So, um, good. Um, it's positive because the negative divided by negative is positive. So this means that this is the 9.3rd term. Okay, so this is the 9.3rd term. So can you have a 9.3 term? Like if I asked you, what's the 9.3rd term? So it means that the ninth term is probably going to be like negative 39. And then the next term is going to be six more than that. But 40, negative 40 is not part of the sequence because we got a decimal. If you get a decimal answer when you plug in a number on the left-hand side, then it means that this is not part, negative 40, we're going to write that down, is not part, I would write it this way, I'm just trying to conserve paper, not part of the sequence. Okay, so negative 40, no. Negative 40 is not part of the sequence. It might be negative 39, it might be negative 38, it might be negative 36, but negative 40, no, that's not part of it. Okay, so how do you tell? You plug it into the left-hand part of the equation, plug it in, and if you get a whole number, if this was a whole number and not a decimal, then yes, it would be part of the sequence. Okay, let's look at number two here. So number two, number two, we have uh, 29, 22, 15, 8, dot, dot, dot. Okay, what's happening to these numbers? Subtracting 7. Okay, we're minusing 7 every time. So our common difference, right, our, our D is negative 7 because it asks you to name the common difference. So our D is negative 7. And that means we know half of the equation already, right? Like our A sub N is going to be, since it's negative 7, it's negative 7n and plus or minus, I don't know if it's going to be plus or minus, the zero term here. This is how you come up with the equation. We have to find the zero term. Term. Well, the zero term is just going to be the number in front of the 29, right? So if we go forward, we minus 7, minus 7, minus 7, minus 7. If we go backwards, we take, you always take the first term and you do the reverse, right? So we're going to add 7 to 29. And what does that give us, you guys? Thank you. Right, gives you 36, right? So 36 is the zero term. So we're going to put that in our equation. Our zero term is 36. If I were to make a sketch, this would start at 36 up here. I get a dot, and then the numbers would go down 7, down 7, down 7, down 7, down 7 every time, right? So that's what that means. This is the zero term. 
the zero term is your y intercept. That is our starting value. That is our start value. All three of those things are synonymous. Zero term, y intercept, start value. They mean the same thing. Okay, the zero term is always part of your equation, so it's very important to find. And that's our equation. Okay, so now we can find any term in the sequence that we want to. We can find the 100th term, we can find the 52nd term, we can find any term. Well, it's asking us to find the 22nd term, right? So we're gonna put a sub 22 here, and we're gonna plug in 22 to find the 22nd term. So negative seven times 22 plus 36. Let's get our calculators out. Go ahead and put seven times 22 in your calculator. Negative seven times 22, what does that give you? Let's see. Negative 154. Negative 154, okay. So this is negative 154 plus 36. So we have to subtract 36 from 154. What does that give us? One eighteen. Good. Negative one eighteen, right? So we've got negative one fifty four plus thirty six. So it means the twenty second term is negative one eighteen. Let's see if that makes sense. First term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Dot dot dot. Till we get the the twenty second term. Do you, does that make sense? That it's going to go down to an, a really big negative number. Yeah, it does, right? Because we're subtracting. So eventually we're gonna get to the negative. So that is the 22nd term. Now, the last thing we wanna see is eight in the sequence. Let's see if you're paying attention here. Is eight in the sequence? I thought this question was funny. Why is that question funny? Because the answer is literally in the sequence. Right, it's right there, right? Eight's right there. But let's test it out. What term is that? Is it, is it the second term? Uh, the second term's right here, right? This is the second term. Fourth term. So it's the fourth term. So that means we, if we plug in a sub four, we should get eight. So let's test it out to make sure. So I wanna plug in a sub four into here, okay? So a sub four is equal to negative seven times four plus 36. Okay, I wanna see if the fourth term is gonna be eight. So when I do negative seven times four, that gives me negative 28 plus 36. Yep, that does equal eight, right? So the fourth term, so I want to, to get used to this notation here. A sub four, this means the fourth term, fourth term, is eight. Okay, the fourth term here is eight. That is what that notation means that other books use. All right, guys, any questions so far before I move on to, um, to geometric sequences? That was the arithmetic sequences. Any questions before I erase this? I'm going to erase this. So if you need to take a picture, if you have a phone to take a picture of it, if I went too fast or anything, you know, you can go ahead and take a picture before, but I do need to erase this. Okay, next screen. Now we're moving on to the geometric sequences, geometric sequences. So I'm going to write on here, geometric sequences, geometric. So 11 on, on the note, on the worksheet, right? This is from the worksheet, is all geometric. So how do you find equations for geometric sequences. Well, there's an equation, a y equals what? Who remembers this very short, easy equation for geometric equations? A times b to the power of n. A times b to the power of n or x. I'm going to keep it x right now, but you're right. If we, I want to make this n, then I'll go like t of n is equal to a times b to the n power, right? So same thing. So I start with this, we're gonna transition to the end. These mean the same thing. So you wanna write these down, please, because a lot of people didn't understand this last class period. 
Uh, so we're doing more practice right now. Okay, how do you come up with the equation for this, okay? So it's actually rather easy, but it's very subtle. You have to really pay attention. So 11, let's write down 11. We have negative three, negative six, negative 12, negative 24, dot, dot, dot. What's happening to the numbers here, you guys? What is happening to the numbers? They're doubling. They're doubling, okay. So we're just multiplying by two, right? Times two. And because we're multiplying, that's what makes it geometric, right? And that means we're gonna use a, an exponential equation. This is bas basically an exponential, right? We're gonna use an exponential equation instead of a linear equation like we did for arithmetic. So when we, if we were to graph this, I'd get a point, a point, a point, and then what kind of graph would we get? definitely get a curve, right? So we did that on the Desmos last time. So we talked about the graphs last time. So we're, we usually don't connect the dots, but so since we are multiplying by two, good. Um, let's go ahead and come up with an equation. Okay, so I'm gonna use that y equals a times b to the x power. So we need to, who remembers what a and b stand for? What do A and B stand for? So A stands for the zero term, right? Somebody typed in the chat, so let me go ahead and look at that. Good. A is the zero term or the y-intercept, and B is the, what is B? We call it the multiplier, right? Um, or in this case, your book calls it the ratio, the common ratio. A ratio is just something you multiply by, so it's the multiplier. Well, we're multiplying by two, Okay, so that is our B value. It's gonna be two to the X power, but instead of two to the X, let's make it two to the N because this is a sequence, so we no longer have X, so it's two to the N. So we just have to plug in the, so we came up with this half of the equation. Now we just have to find the zero term. The zero term is the term, so this is the first term. It's the term that should come before this. And this one's gonna be a fraction. And a lot of times it's gonna be a fraction, but let me show you how easy it is to come up with the zero term. You do this every time, okay? To come up with a zero term, you take the first term and you put it over the multiplier. You divide by the multiplier, okay? That is like the little thing, equation that you do. So our first term is negative three and our multiplier was two. We multiplied by two, so now we're gonna divide by two. So this is the zero term. This is the term that precedes negative three is negative three halves, which is negative 1.5, but don't use a decimal. Um, 1.5 is half of negative three, right? So if I multiply 1.5 times two, I'm gonna get negative three. So that is always how you come up with the zero term. You always take the first term, you put it in the numerator, and then you put the multiplier in the denominator. And if you need to reduce, you reduce, but this one doesn't reduce, okay? So that tells me the equation is negative three halves times two to the n power. And we could put t of n or a sub n. We're just gonna use a sub n for this, for this worksheet, right? That a sub n could be a t of n. Those are interchangeable. Okay, so that is how you come up with the equation. So if I plug in one into this equation, it should give me negative three. If I plug in two into this equation, it's gonna give me negative six. If I plug in three into this equation, it's gonna give me negative 12. If I plug in four into this equation, it's gonna give me negative 24. We wanna find A of nine, which is the ninth term, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth term. So to quickly do that, we're gonna plug in nine into this. So we're gonna go A sub nine is equal to negative three halves, 
times two to the ninth power. Okay, when you guys write this on your exit ticket to write two to the ninth, you need to go two little carrot nine. That's how you write two to that's this is how you type two to the ninth for an answer in a Google form or in Desmos or anything like that. You use the little carrot button, which is shift six, right? This this carrot you do shift six. I'm always saying shift six, okay, to get that carrot button. So that's how you type an exponent in Delta Math. Whenever we have a test in the exit ticket today, that's how you're going to type it. So two to the ninth in your calculator. Hope you have a calculator and use that button. What do we get? Two to the ninth is like 512. Okay. So when I do two to the ninth here, because order of operations, I get 512 for two to the ninth, and then I multiply by negative three halves. And do that in your calculator, guys. There is a fraction on, button on your calculator. It looks like this, A, B, C fraction, right? If you have that button on the like second row on the top of your calculator, so here's your calculator. If you have a TI, 30X is which what we uh, recommend. It is like one, two, three, but it's the third button in the second row over here. So it's right there, this A, B, C button right? And you use that to do your negative three halves. You put negative three, ABC button, two, and it's going to look like this. This is what a fraction looks like in your calculator. That's negative three halves times uh, 512. And what does it give you, you guys? It gives you a whole number. What number is that? Negative 768 is what you should get. So you need to try this and make sure you're getting these answers on your calculators, right? So it gave me a bigger number than 512 because 3 halves is 1.5, so it's going to be bigger. So the ninth term, a sub 9, is going to equal, oh, I put n, a sub 9 is going to equal negative 768. Okay, a sub 9 here is equal to negative 68. So the ninth term is going to be negative 768. Keep going. That means the ninth term here is going to be all the way up here at, um, oh, sorry, all this goes down. So it's going to be down here at negative 768. Okay, it's going to be 9, negative 768, like that. Because this line actually curves down. It goes down, down down, 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 curve like that. All right. Okay. So let's, so that is, um, do we answer everything? Yeah. It doesn't ask us to find if something's in the term or not, if a term is in the sequence, because we can't do that yet algebraically. You will in math three, if you get to math three. Okay. All right. Let's clear this out. I have to clear this to do number 12 here. So you need to take a screenshot. Go ahead. All right, let's take a look at number 12 here. So let's copy this down. 12 says negative 1, comma, negative 3, negative 9, negative 27, dot, dot, dot. What is happening to these numbers, you guys? What is the multiplier. Do we have a multiplier? Three. It's three. All right. Good job. Is that Furman again? I didn't see the name. It just flashed the name and I wasn't looking. I was looking to the side. It was who? Oliver Stoll. Oh, Oliver. Hey. All right. Um, yeah. So the multiplier is three. So we're Timesing by three, timesing by three, timesing by three. Okay, so what is that equation that we're using, guys? Whenever it's geometric, right? What equation do we use? It has an A and a B in it. What is it? Um, it's the uh, A times BX. Okay, a times b to the x power, right? It's exponential. So we have an exp we have an exponent in it. This is an exponential. Okay, so the x is an exponent, a times b to the x. Okay, what do a and b stand for, you guys? 
A is the zero term, B is the, the multiplier or the ratio. Good. Yeah, multiplier ratio, same thing. Good. So A is the zero term, which we have to find. They never tell it to us, but it's pretty easy to find. And then B is the multiplier or the ratio. Good. Good. I think some of you are looking at your notes, so that's good. That's why we take notes, right? You could, can use these notes on a quiz or a quiz or a test or a or a um, exit ticket. I don't see why not uh, for my 1012 class, for my ninth grade class. You guys aren't allowed to use notes for your um, for your tests. Okay, multiplier or ratio, right? Okay, we know the ratio, right? What is the ratio? What is the multiplier? It's three, right? So it's going to be three to the n power. We're going to change that x to n, three to the n power. Now we just have to multiply by the um, zero term. So we have to find the zero term. The zero term is the number before this. And remember, I gave you a little equation to help you. The zero term is the, you take the first term, right? We take the first term and we put it over the what? Over the multiplier. So our first term is negative one, and I'm gonna put it over the multiplier. First term over the multiplier, three. So the zero term is negative one third. So you will get a fraction a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times. So this is our equation. Our a times b to the x power is negative one third times three to the n power. This is our multiplier, this is our starting value. And then we have like a sub n, you know, or t sub t of n, but right now we're using a sub n. So this is our equation. We can use this equation to find any of the values. Well, we want to find the 11th term, right? The 11th value. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we want to find the 11th term. We could just use our calculator and keep multiplying by three, but what if we want to find the 100th term? That would take a lot longer. So to find the 11th term, we plug in 11 into our equation. Negative one third times three to the 11th power. Okay, try this in your calculator, guys. Make sure you're getting the correct answer because you have to do this on the exit ticket and the test. So make sure you're gonna get the correct answer. Try this in your calculator, please. And tell me what you get. Or type it in the chat. That would be awesome if you could type it in the chat. Negative 59.049. Yes, good. Good. Use your calculators. So, yes, it is negative 59,049. Negative 59,049 is the answer when you plug it in correctly into your calculator. You plug this into your calculator, you should get this. Very important, you try it in your calculator because if you're not using your calculator correctly, you're gonna get a different answer. So you must try this to make sure you get it right on the homework and the test. Okay, so that is the 11th term uh, into the sequence. And that is how, okay, hopefully you guys understand now how you use a geometric, how you come up with the equation for a geometric problem and how you do a um, arithmetic. The first two were arithmetic and these last two were geometric. All right, so right now we're going to do uh, your exit ticket. So let me stop this uh, video right here. I need to end this.